Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're doing a story time today. We're going to have two books primarily, and we'll have like a page or two from another one. So the first one that we have is called Khadija and the Cat. Ramadan is here. Let me hold it up a little closer so you can see this beautiful artwork. So it's called, it's written by Shamsa Ahmed, illustrated by Afsana Bagarlu. Hope I pronounced those names correctly. And here's Khadija and she's holding her cat. And I promise this ring light won't be distracting as we get into the story. But again, just wanted to zoom in on that. All right, so let's get going. Khadija and the cat. Ramadan is here. To fast is best for you, if you only knew. Quran, Surah 2, verse 184. Khadija and the cat stepped outside of their house after eating. They looked up searching for something in the starry sky. Look there, look there, we found it, Khadija, said the cat, pointing to the breathtaking crescent moon as a star was going by. We found it, it's beautiful, subhanAllah, said Khadija. Now that we have found the crescent moon, what does it mean? Does this mean Ramadan is here since it has been seen? Asked Kat. Why, yes, exclaimed uh, Khadija. With this new moon sighting, the holy month of Ramadan has begun. Let's go, let's go. We have to make a run. Khadija urged. You see them running up the path. Looks like they're going towards the town and maybe to this beautiful mosque here. They hurried downtown to spread the news. Ramadan is here, Ramadan is here. The moon has been sighted. Ramadan is here, shouted Khadija and Kat. Guys, I don't know why there's a tiny little TX T Rex dragon. I don't know. He's a superhero and he is here for Ramadan. So I have to point this out because this is really funny and cute. He's ready for Ramadan too. And look at Kat. She's so excited. And look at Khadija. She's all dressed up and beautiful, ready for Ramadan. And they're in the town and they're telling everybody and everybody's getting excited. Everyone in town began to prepare, decorating their homes and streets with lights and lanterns as Ramadan was declared. Got a beautiful stall here with all this delicious food. See Kat, she's licking her paws and she's getting ready. She thinks that looks delicious too. The smell of delicious foods filled the air as families prepared various types of meals that were to be shared. Looks like these two sisters here are having some pizza and enjoying themselves. I bet you guys like pizza too. Pizza is one of my favorites. Khadija and Kat slowly made their way back home to get a good night's rest. They had to wake up early for suhoor and be their best. 
So here's Khadija's room. Look at that. She's sleeping. Oh, there he is. The little dinosaur dragon T-Rex, whatever he is. And look, here's Cat, all curled up, getting ready. Wake up, Cat, called Khadija. It was still dark outside. It's time for suhoor. We have to eat a healthy meal. The meal we eat has to get us through the day as that is ideal. Let's see what they're having for suhoor. Mmm, looks like Kat is having a delicious fish. And looks like Khadija's maybe having some cereal or oatmeal. She's got some juice and eggs. That looks like, like a scrumptious meal. After suhoor, Khadija and Kat prayed and went back to sleep. But before they knew it, the alarm went off with a loud beep, beep, beep. See that alarm? It's going off. It's time to wake up. The sun is out. Let's go eat, Khadija. I'm hungry, said Kat. Wait, don't do it, Kat, Khadija said without a doubt. She continued, remember, we have to, we have a fast. Don't forget that it needs to last. But when can we eat or drink? asked Kat. Not until the sun goes down, Khadija explained. What? No food at all? Not even a drink? I don't know how I'm going to survive today. It is starting to make me rethink, whined Kat. She's like, no juice, no water, no fish and no pizza. I don't know about this. Kat, remember that you have to be strong. Ramadan is the holy month for Muslims, where we thank Allah throughout our day. From sunrise to sunset, we keep fast and pray. It might not be easy, but once the sun has settled and the day is done, we can break our fast together, one by one, Khadija explained. And look at their beautiful Ramadan decorations. They've got a Ramadan Kareem banner by the fireplace. They've got a moon and star. Looks really sparkly. And here's her prayer mat and her Quran. Ooh, and it looks like they've got some presents here. And it's a beautiful banner here in the back. Do you guys have decorations too? Fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam. It is Allah's way of helping Muslims develop self-control, purifying our bodies, minds, and souls. It helps us understand God's gifts and develop greater compassion towards, toward the underprivileged as we learn to appreciate our blessing so that we are not regressing. And what that means is that we want everybody to self-control means you don't eat the whole package of cookies or the whole pizza. You only eat what you need and make sure there's enough to share with others. And then we also want to understand how people might feel that don't have all the options that we have. 30 days may sound rough, but we will make it through even if it's tough. So they've got the Ramadan calendar here, and they've got a reminder of the five pillars of Islam. And she's pointing and telling Kat that fasting Ramadan is one of the five pillars. Khadija and Kat sat through the day, fasting, praying, and learning about Ramadan as time passed away. 
they learned that Ramadan was meant for Muslims to spend more time with their loved ones, to read the Holy Quran since it was revealed in this month, to engage in self-reflection, to be extra generous, to be honest, to not gossip, to be kind to others, and to feed those in need. Having good intentions always leads to doing a good deed. Let me zoom in on this. So here it says love, you're sharing love. You have some time with the Holy Quran, feeding those in need, being generous, and no gossip. Finally, the sun set and the fourth adhan of the day was called. It was time to break their fast for iftar. Do you guys think they're ready after fasting all day? Looks like they're ready. They're listening to this adhan being called. They drank water and ate some dates as a lot of food was piled onto their plates. But first, cat, we have to pray. Then we can eat the delicious food and sweets on that tray, said Khadija. Looks like they've got some delicious rice, maybe, some bread and dates, some yummy veggies, maybe some soup there. And look who's the first one off to pray. <laughs> They prayed and made dua, ate, thanked Allah for the weight. See that? They even gave the neighbors some snacks and toys so that everyone could share the Ramadan joys. This is from Khadija and Kat and they're sharing some nice presents with their neighbors. I bet the neighbors were excited for that. Cat sighed. I love Ramadan. It's such a beautiful month. Even though 30 days might seem long, with family beside us, anything can be done. No matter what happens, no matter, I'm sorry, no matter what happens, no one can mess up this holy month. Let's do it all over again tomorrow, Khadija, said Kat as they walked to their room and prepared for the next one. The days of Ramadan quickly passed as the last 10 days have come by so fast. The last 10 days are important in our tradition as the night of power is the holiest night and everyone's mission. Laylatul Qadr is our night given to us so we may shine bright. Khadija and Kat fasted, prayed, kept focus, and soon developed a routine which would help them after Ramadan to be their best one had ever seen. The month of Ramadan is as special as can be. Khadija and Kat invite you to join them for a fast so you can see. Let's look at Kat's invitation. It says, invitation, Ramadan Kareem. Let's go over to Khadija's. It says, invitation, Ramadan Kareem. That's a nice invitation. Khadija and Kat have something to say. Enjoy the month's blessings that are coming your way. Ramadan Kareem. See that? They are wishing you a wonderful, beautiful, generous Ramadan. The end. And here just goes over the days of Ramadan.
and some questions about Ramadan, which we'll skip for today. What did you guys think about that story? That's our first one. Did you like it? All right, so the next one is going to be called Cinderella, but it's not the Cinderella that you know. This one is by Fauzia Jelani and it's an Islamic version. This one's a little longer, so I'm gonna read just a touch faster. But here we go. Once upon a time, there lived a rich and noble man and a kind and beautiful lady. They had a daughter named Zara, who was sweet and gentle and as beautiful as the crescent moon. Every day, Zara and her parents would read the Quran and they never missed a prayer. As the months passed by, Zara's mo mother became ill. Although many doctors had been called, no one could find a cure. One sad day, Zara's mother died. Father and daughter were heartbroken. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun, said the father with tears in his eyes. Truly, we belong to Allah and to him we will return. Zara and her father were very sad, but they put their trust in Allah and asked him to grant them patience and comfort. The story gets better, I promise. After some time, the father decided to marry again. He married a widow with two daughters. In the beginning, the new wife tried to be loving and caring, but as time went, as time went on, she saw how graceful Zara was compared to her own daughters. This made her extremely jealous. She saw that while Zara was beautiful and elegant, her own daughters were plain and clumsy. While Zara was humble and giving, her own daughters were proud and selfish. And while Zara was gentle and kind, the stepmother's daughters were rough and cruel. This was more than the stepmother could bear, and darkness grew in her heart. When her husband was away, the stepmother was harsh and unfair to the girl. She made Zara do most of the housework while her own lazy daughters slept or played. But Zara was forgiving and patient and never complained to her father. A few years later, Zara's father became very ill. One day, he called his daughter to his side and gave her words of love and advice. My sweet child, he said, follow the Quran and the Sunnah and never miss your prayers. Be patient and humble. Always speak gently and share whatever you have with the poor. And know that I love you very much. May Allah protect you and make you a strong Muslim. The poor child clung to her father. You must hold fast to the rope of Allah and never let go, he said. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Those were the last words her father spoke. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim, whispered the poor, poor girl as she wept. Zara was alone in the world. She was an orphan with no one to love her. Or so she thinks. After her father died, the stepmother took away Zara's beautiful clothes and gave her old clothes and rags to wear. Then she took away her bedroom and made her sleep in the attic. From that time on, Zara was ordered to do all the housework. One day, as the poor orphan was tending to the fireplace, some live cinders fell on her dress and burned holes in it. Try trying to put out the cinders, she became covered with soot. Her stepsisters began to laugh at her. Cinderella, Cinderella, they teased and taunted. After that, they no longer used her real name, but only called her Cinderella. The orphaned child felt very sad. She missed her mother and father very much. She often thought of them. When she prayed, she would make special du'as and sujood. Du'as made in sujood reach Allah swiftly, her mother had told her. 
Be patient, my child, her father had encouraged. Cinderella was always patient. She read the Quran every day and comforted herself with the words of God and stories of God's messengers. Cinderella would wake up early at Fajr before sunrise to do her morning prayers. Then she would sit and read the Quran. When she had finished, she would prepare breakfast for her stepmother and stepsisters. Then the poor orphan would wash all the dishes, wipe the counters, make the beds, sweep and mop the floors. At noon, she would offer her midday prayers and quickly eat her lunch. When Cinderella felt lonely, she would take the crumbs she had saved from the table and feed the birds. She would watch them chirp and peck as she washed the dishes. When her kitchen work was done, she would sometimes join them, quietly singing a song of her own. Cinderella spent her whole day working. When she was not cooking, washing, ironing, or dusting, she would find a little time to read her books in her tiny little attic, sitting on her old thin mattress. Look, she's enjoying some time with the birds. Cinderella always served dinner to her stepmother and stepsisters in the dining room. She was never invited to join them. Instead, she was told to sit alone in the kitchen and eat the leftovers. By the time she had offered her nighttime prayers, she was very tired. She would recite some surahs before she closed her eyes and then whisper the shahada. The more difficulty Cinderella faced, the stronger her iman grew. Iman means faith. Meanwhile, her stepmother and stepsisters became lazier and more arrogant each day. One day, an invitation arrived from the king's palace. A huge party was to be held on the evening of the first day of Eid al-Adha, the celebration after Hajj. The stepsisters were all a flutter about what they should wear. Cinderella was just as excited. The thought of going to the palace and attending an Eid party sounded wonderful. There's the invitation. And there's Cinderella dreaming about going to that party. Could I please wear one of your dresses? Cinderella asked shyly while her stepsisters eagerly looked through their closets. They swung round and looked at her with disgust. Wear one of our dresses? shouted the stepsisters together. Never! How dare you even think of going to the palace? scolded the younger stepsister. You belong in the cinders, not in a palace, yelled the older stepsister. Yes, Cinderella, said the stepmother, peering down at the orphan. There will be very important people at the palace. It's not a place for someone like you. Both stepsisters screeched with laughter and returned to their closets to choose a dress. Poor Cinderella. Cinderella looked at her torn old dress and thought of a Quranic verse she had read. Truly the most honored of you in Allah's eyes is the one who is most righteous. Then she reminded herself of the words of the beloved prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Truly, Allah does not look at your faces and your wealth, but he looks at your hearts and your deeds. Later that evening, Cinderella opened her hadith book and read, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, fasting on the day of Arafah removes the sins of two years, the past and the coming year. Alhamdulillah, said Cinderella. Tomorrow is the day of Arafah. I will fast tomorrow, inshallah. And with that intention, she fell asleep. 
During the night, Cinderella dreamt of her grandmother, who years ago had left to make Hajj. She had never returned, and most people believe that she had died during the journey. Late that night, before the sky's first light, Cinderella heard the call of a cockerel and awoke suddenly. That means like a rooster. She smiled, thankful that she had woken in time to eat suhoor. She crept down to the kitchen and quickly ate and drank her meal. Then during the blessed part of the night, when Zara knew that Allah listens to special requests, she prayed two rakahs and made a dua. Dear Allah, I would really like to go to the palace for the Eid party. If it is good for my faith and for my life in this world and the next, please let me go. I mean. The sun rose and brought the beautiful day of Eid al-Adha. Cinderella was excited. She washed, dressed, and made herself ready to go to the Eid prayer. And where do you think you're going? snapped the stepmother. Oh, it's Eid. With your permission, I would like to attend the Eid prayers, said Cinderella. You will not go to the Eid prayer, hissed the stepmother. You will help my daughters get ready for the Eid party. Tears filled Cinderella's eyes, but she looked down to the floor and thought of another Quranic verse she had memorized. Allah does not place on any soul a burden greater than it can bear. So pray, O oh Lord, do not lay a greater burden on us than we have the strength to bear. Remove our sins, forgive us, and have mercy on us. You are our protector, so help us against those who stand against faith. All day long, Cinderella helped her stepsisters prepare for the Eid party. She ironed their dresses, polished their shoes, and went to the jeweler to mend a necklace. When she returned, she began to work on their hair and makeup. At last, it was time for the stepsisters and stepmother to leave. Dear stepmother, Cinderella asked once again, may I please attend the Eid party? At first, the stepmother's face flushed red with anger. And, but then she said, very well, Cinderella, you may come to the party after you have finished all your chores. But stepmother, I'll miss the party if I don't leave right now, said Cinderella. Once you've finished all of your chores, repeated the stepmother coldly, and only then. Cinderella stood at the door and watched them go. She felt very lonely and sad. She thought of a Quranic verse. For those who are patient and do good deeds, there is forgiveness and a great reward. Cinderella went inside with a lump in her throat and began to pick up the dresses that lay scattered around the room. Suddenly, there was a loud knock at the door. Cinderella walked to the door and pe peered through the peephole. Seeing an old woman in hijab, she opened it. Assalamu alaikum said Cinderella curiously. Wa alaikum as -salam, my child, said the old woman warmly. Beyond the step, Cinderella saw a grand coach with beautiful horses and six attendants, dressed in magnificent costumes. Masha'Allah, said Cinderella, looking at the splendid sight. You must have come for my stepmother and stepsisters. I'm sorry, but they've already left. See that? Very fancy. No, said the old woman whose face looked vaguely familiar. I did not come for them. The old lady paused and then continued. My dear child, I came for you. Cinderella stared at the old lady and then sadly shook her head. You are very kind, she stammered, holding back the tears. Jazakallah khairan. I'm so sorry, but I can't go. I don't have party clothes and, she sighed, 
I don't have time. I have to finish my chores. Cinderella glanced around at the mess, but please, Cinderella, said Cinderella as she looked up into the kind eyes of the stranger. May I ask who I have the honor of addressing? Sweet Zara, you did not recognize me, said the old woman. It is true that you haven't seen me for many years, but as I look at you, I see your dear mother's face in your own. Cinderella stared into the stranger's gentle eyes. Then she flung her arms around the old woman. Grandmother, she sobbed. I saw you in my dream. Where have you been? The old woman held Cinderella in her arms for a long time. Dear child, said Cinderella's grandmother, on my return from Hajj, I passed through a country that was at war. For many years, the people were not free to travel, but we will speak of these things another time. Alhamdulillah, I'm back now. Come, she said, let's go. But I still have to clean the house, said Cinderella. Grandmother clapped her hands and the six attendants entered the house and began to clean. Wow. Dear grandmother, what about my clothes? Asked Cinderella. Grandmother clapped her hands again. Three ladies appeared with a dress, a green abaya, a headscarf, and two glass slippers. Quickly, Cinderella washed and made wudu. And then the ladies arranged her hair and scarf and helped her with her clothing. Finally, they gently slid delicate glass slippers onto her feet. Cinderella looked in a mirror. She looked elegant and very happy. She took her grandmother's arm and sat in the beautiful coach. In no time at all, they reached the palace. Now remember, my dear, cautioned the grandmother as they arrived at the palace, the party will, will end soon after 11 o'clock. You must home, return home by then, before your stepmother and stepsisters. I will be waiting for you in the coach. Inshallah, dear grandmother, I will, promised Cinderella as she kissed her goodbye and said her salam. And off she goes in her beautiful new abaya. Oh, I forgot to show you her glass slippers. They're very shiny. See that? Here they are again, catching the light. Cinderella walked in through the ladies' entrance, passing her stepsisters. She greeted and smiled as she walked by. The stepsisters just stared at Cinderella, wondering who she was. She's very pretty, whispered the older girl. Everyone is looking at her, said the younger one. All the ladies and girls watched Cinderella. They wondered who the lovely, radiant young woman was, dressed in full hijab. Other beautiful girls were there too, but only Cinderella walked with a graceful modesty and an inner light that comes from a life of taqwa. There she is. Cinderella caught the attention of the king, the queen, and Prince Bilal, Prince Bilal as they passed her in the large hallway. Who is that girl in the green abaya and headscarf? Asked the prince. Nobody seemed to know. The queen came to greet Cinderella in the ladies' hall and asked Cinderella to sit beside her while the aid program was presented. The drummers drummed, the singers sang, and the acrobats performed. Delicious trays of food were served. Then the adhan was called. Most of the women continued to talk through the adhan, but Cinderella remained silent. When the prayer began, most of the women continued to eat, but Cinderella joined those who went to pray. She impressed the queen with her graceful speech and behavior. Cinderella was so happy. The poor girl could not remember having such a wonderful time. She's watching the performances. 
Suddenly, Cinderella noticed people preparing to leave. It was 11 o'clock. Mumbling an excuse, Cinderella quickly left the hall. As she rushed into the coach to join her grandmother, her glass slipper slid off her foot and fell to the ground. Just at that moment, her stepmother came out of the palace door. Please hurry, said Cinderella to the coachman. I must get home. And she left her slipper behind. Meanwhile, the prince walked down the palace steps and picked up the delicate glass slipper. See? There it is, that shiny, beautiful glass slipper she left behind because she was in such a rush. The prince returned to the queen holding the glass slipper. Mother, said Prince Bilal, I saw many young ladies today, but I saw no one with more taqwa and beauty than the girl in the green hijab. That is the girl I wish to marry. The queen smiled. SubhanAllah, she said. It is rare to find young ladies with such good character. Inshallah, you will marry the girl who has Iman, the girl to whom this glass slipper belongs. The queen sighed and then continued, but first we must find her. She disappeared before I could ask who she was. There they are holding that glass slipper and wondering who Cinderella was. Now, my child, said the grandmother, as she helped Cinderella out of the coach, when your stepmother arrives, you must not let her know I was here. Inshallah, I will return for you tomorrow. I promise. She hurriedly kissed and hugged Cinderella and gave her salam. The grandmother quickly left with her attendants. Cinderella hid her aid dress in the attic and put the remaining glass slipper carefully into a wooden chest under her bed. No sooner had she done so when her stepmother and stepsisters returned. Oh, we met such a beautiful girl at the palace, said the stepsisters to Cinderella. She fussed over us and kept wanting to talk with us, lied the older stepsister, looking vainly at herself in the mirror. Yes, she took our hand and even wanted us to sit beside the queen, added the younger stepsister, adding another lie. Mashallah, said Cinderella. I'm glad you had such a wonderful time. The next morning, the whole town was buzzing with excitement. The king and queen had announced that their son wished to marry the girl whose foot fit into the glass slipper he had found. The queen's lady-in-waiting was to go to each home that had received an invitation and allow the young ladies of the house to try on the glass slipper. I'm sure the slipper will fit me, said the younger stepsister. My foot is smaller, said the older one. It will fit me. The stepsisters began to argue when suddenly there was a loud knock on the door. Cinderella went to see who it was. Assalamu alaikum, said Cinderella as she opened the door. Wa alaikum assalam replied the queen's lady in waiting. She held a chest containing the delicate glass slipper. Cinderella excused herself and hurried to the attic and took her glass slipper out of the wooden chest. She hid it in her apron pocket. Meanwhile, the older stepsister was the first to try on the slipper, but no matter how hard she tried, her foot was far too big. Then the second stepsister tried on the slipper, but her toes were far too wide. The queen's lady then looked around and saw Cinderella coming down the stairs. You must also try on the glass slipper, she said. Oh, that's absurd, said the younger stepsister. Cinderella is just a house cleaner. She's a maid, blurted the older stepsister. Oh, here they are with that glass slipper coming in. Nevertheless, said the queen's lady, all the young women of the house have been ordered to try on the glass slipper. She stepped forward and gave Cinderella the slipper. Cinderella took the slipper and placed it on her foot. To the complete amazement of the stepsisters and stepmother, it fit. 
Then Cinderella reached into her pocket and pulled out the other glass slipper and slid it onto her other foot. The stepsisters stood with their mouths wide open. They could hardly believe that Cinderella was the same girl they had so admired at the party. The stepmother grew red with anger and envy. You, she shouted, you do not have my permission to marry. Just then the door swung open and the grandmother walked in. My grandchild may not have your permission to marry, said the old woman firmly, but alhamdulillah, she has mine. The stepmother and stepsisters could only stare in astonishment. There's the grandmother to the rescue. And so it was agreed. Prince Bilal was very happy to hear that his bride had been found, and so was Cinderella. They were married in a joyous ceremony. From that day on, the lovely Zara was never called Cinderella again. Princess Zara lived happily ever after. And that's the end of the story. All right, so what did you guys think about that version of Cinderella? Was it different than the one that you've seen maybe? All right, well, let us know what you think. And. Cool, thank you, Lena, very much. Absolutely, thank you.